You ready, guys? All right. Uh, so thank you for coming. Um, this is going to be a, a, a talk on ransomware. It's just an overview, so it's not going to be like getting into the weeds of each kind of ransomware. Um, it's going to be basically what um, we see at, at our company as uh, the most popular kinds of ransomware right now, um, some detection methods and things like that. So without further ado, hi, I'm Jamie. Uh, I'm the chief information. Hi, uh, I'm the chief information security officer at Binary Defense Systems. Um, my career, it's always been blue team. I've never been one of those weird hacker. I'm gonna break stuff. I'm the guy who's like, nah, you're not gonna get in here. But you know, let's face it, they do. Um, I'm a big gamer, so like those like, hey, one thing about you. I'm a gamer and I'm an old school nerd. Um, my first platform was a Commodore 64, which I love and I wish I still had. Um, and if you feel like following me, that's my handle on um, on Twitter. And even though none of them are here, which is awesome for support, um, special thanks to the Binary Defense Systems Threat Intelligence Team. He's not in the Threat Intelligence Team, man. Come on. Um, no, I actually uh, I consult them uh, very frequently. Uh, they're really, really smart guys who really know their stuff. So thanks, guys. You're not here, but you'll watch it. So what are we going to talk about? Um, again, we're going to go over trends in ransomware, what we're seeing um, at Binary Defense. And this is not a plug, but, I mean, it's, this is what we see. We monitor a lot of different networks, and we focus on... You know, what can we do to help other people? Um, the most common types that we're seeing and some of the build platforms, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because it changes so often that honestly, I wrote this presentation on uh, Wednesday and it's probably changed since then. We're also going to talk a little bit about what do we see on the horizon? What do we uh, in the field that really track this stuff? What do we see coming out? What do we think is going to be the next thing? Um, some detection methods and also some best practices. So, what are we seeing for trends? So, ransomware has increased 3,000% since it first got recorded. Really quick, anyone, why do you think that is? Why do you think ransomware has jumped that high? It works. It's easy. You get paid. Healthcare and point-of-sale systems uh, and banking in general are the major uh, oh that could have been so bad mute my phone because I know people are going to call me just because I'm up here and mess with me so you know healthcare and point of sale systems major targets right now um, health, health records uh, are you can actually get more money for health records than you can for um for credit cards now, uh, there's a lot of, you know, health information online. So, you know, the criminals know this, and they know that if that kind of stuff gets locked up, they're in a world of hurt. And that goes to the next point, which most companies do not report ransomware. If they get hit by ransomware, they don't report it to the authorities. And that makes it very hard to actually get a good trend on what's going on. Um, I've worked with uh, the FBI on a couple of different things, and that's their biggest complaint, if you will, right now, when it comes to cybercrime, is we can't get a good trend of what's going on because companies aren't telling us that we're getting that they're getting hit by ransomware. They're not telling us anything about it. Now, when a company gets breached, depending on the regulatory compliance that they have, they have to disclose. Um, and they work with the FBI, et cetera, et cetera. So the FBI has a lot of good information on um, how breaches happen, you know, what do they do, et cetera, et cetera, but not, when, not with ransomware. Companies actually, part of their incident response or part of their uh, policy for cybersecurity is, hey, we need to buy Bitcoin in case we get hit by ransomware. That's actually part of their incident response process. We need to buy Bitcoin just in case we get hit. Not, you know, let's do the right thing. Let's have a good security program, et cetera, et cetera. It's, oh, look at all these companies that are getting hit with it. Let's just buy Bitcoin. And ransomware as a service, I'll tell you what, if you were a bad guy, 
it is a great service to be in. It is so easy. You can literally just, uh, you know, if you go to the right places, say, I, you know, I want to, I want to go after this company, but I'm not technically savvy enough to do my own ransomware, or I don't really understand how it works. No problem. They'll take care of it, and they get their cut of whatever you do, and it's a great business model. Actually, the tech support for those guys is better than tech support for like Microsoft and other places because, you know, they want to make their money too, and they actually. It's sad. They actually care about their customers. Come on. So what are we seeing as the most ty common types of ransomware right now? So I only picked four, the top four that we actually are seeing right now. If you read uh, different things online, et cetera, et cetera, it'll be different from this. This is just what we're seeing. So Zepto or Locky. Um, is it's also called, is the top one we're seeing right now. And that actually is pretty common across the industry right now is uh, Zepto or Locky is the big thing. Uh, server version 1, 2, and 3 is is still out there and it's still doing a lot of damage. Um, dot Locky is a little bit newer of one, and we'll go into that a little bit. And then um, Coveter. So let's talk a little bit about Zepto, a.k.a. Locky. What's that? I'm sorry. Yeah. So oh. When you're at the podium, you're right in front of the board. You just maybe slide the text over to the right a little bit. That'd be helpful. I can't, but he'll do that, and I'll stand over here. Awesome. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you for pointing it out, though. So Zepto, uh, it tar it targets all versions of Windows, and the thing about that is, even if it's removed, a lot of times the Zeptos you still won't get your files. So ransomware, you know, you'll say, hey, I got hit. It'll tell you to contact this, pay this Bitcoin. You get the decryptor. It's all good. Not with this one. This one's actually kind of, you know, a jerk ransomware, where, if you will. And I'm actually trying not to cuss, and it's hard. Um, yeah, so you still might even not get your files. Easiest way to tell for this one, obviously, has a .zepto extension. So server, this one is actually uh, a pretty smart way to go about, you know, if you want to do ransomware, because you have a week to actually pay to get the decryption key. Now, a week isn't really a lot of time when you're doing an investigation, when you're trying to actually figure out what's going on. Can you get files? Can you not get files? Well, if you don't pay within a week, it doubles, and it continues to go from there. Uh, it creates a few different files um, that are named Decrypt My Files, and that's dropped every folder that the encrypted files are in. So the funny thing about ransomware, too, is it's not, once you get hit, like, it's not that hard to tell. Um, if you have a targeted attack against your organization, you know, you might get some kind of alert, some kind of trigger that you know, okay, somebody's here, and then you have to... You know, go through the needle in the haystack trying to find out what are they doing, how they get here, etc. Not ransomware. Ransomware is pretty much, hey, here I am. You got to pay me. And it's very, so this one's very similar to uh, CryptoWall and uh, TeslaCrypt. Dot Locky. It's a variant of, uh, of TeslaCrypt 3.0. Uh, it's, it's fairly newer and um, it does change the victim's files uh, to a different string every time. So it's not like the, uh, you know, like uh, decrypt my files type thing. It actually changes the string. It's a little bit more hard to find. And the tricky thing about this one, it will delete your uh, shadow copies, and it will also uh, kill your system restore points. So they're actually getting a little bit better uh and by they, I mean the guys who developed the ransomware, uh, about trying to protect themselves a little bit more so it can take care of, well, the, the problem for them, if you will, of, well, you know, we'll just restore it. Kofter. This one's funny. Um, this is actually kind of one of my favorites just because it's kind of like a big troll, too. It'll actually do what's uh, the, the common, like, police scam. So it'll go through your history on your browser. And it'll find a website and say, hey, you've gone here. And 
this is an illegal website or this has illegal content or you just shouldn't have been here. And it will say that because of what you've done, you have illegal activity, your stuff's been encrypted, and you need to contact us and pay the Bitcoin. Well, a lot of people will see that and say, uh-oh, I've gone to this site. I shouldn't have gone there. The feds know now. I have to get my stuff unencrypted. I don't want to tell anybody because, you know, I went to a bad place. So this one actually has a very, very high uh, success rate for the payment. And obviously, for obvious reasons, a very low point of being um, of being reported to the police. Yes, sir. Is that one that actually had the premise of this is a fine you're paying? Because I've seen those before. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the question was. To the FBI or. Yeah. yeah. So the question was, uh, is this more on the premise of like it's a fine, not really, it's not really a. Uh, Paying a ransom, it's more on the, you, you have a fine for going here. And yes, it is. That is, that is a good question. Thank you. So some of the different, uh, platforms that this ransomware is built off of, um, Game Over Zeus is still a very common platform. Actually, the entire Zeus family, a lot of ransomware is built off of that because it's easily to, it's easy to deploy. Um, nuclear exploit kit, again, another one that's very easy to deploy. It's very easy to drop. So it's, you know, the, the ransomware authors, they know what's, what works and what doesn't and mal for malware in general. So they'll actually develop their kits to be put into these things that already work. And of course, you know, Locky and CryptoLocker. So on the horizon. So again, this is, not necessarily what they say. This is what we're seeing and what how we think um, everything's going to go down. So ransomware buyers are going to be start are going to start uh, customizing the things a lot more, and we're already seeing this with Adam. So being able to customize your um, your malware for or, I'm sorry your ransomware for what you specifically want it to do. We're already seeing um, where you get. The entire disk encrypted, not just specific files, and we're seeing this with uh with Mamba. Now, obviously, that's a lot worse because maybe it encrypts some files, and maybe the files that it gets, you don't really care about. But when you have your whole disk encrypted, for obvious reasons, that's a big problem. No command and control interaction needed. This one is uh, something that Lockheed's starting to do again. Um, it embeds the key. So there's no interaction needed. So even if you, you know, you just find out, uh oh, I just downloaded this and I believe it's ransomware and you pull the plug. So it doesn't connect. It doesn't uh, talk out. It doesn't matter because it doesn't need to talk back. Targeted ransomware. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. But now when I say targeted, it's not just a specific company that they look for. So let's say uh, they're going after binary defense. Okay, so they'll, they'll write the, the, uh, the ransomware for that. But if they do their recon properly, and you're gonna, and we're gonna see this a lot, um, with state sponsored attacks, they're gonna start using ransomware in their attacks. So they go through their whole, um, their whole process of, you know, doing their investigations on the, on the company, finding out what kind of assets they have, et cetera, et cetera. And you're gonna see that when they, when they do their attacks, it's going to include ransomware specifically to specific assets in that organization. More module ransomware, that's actually already happening. Um, and ransomware being put out that's very easy to decrypt. So ransomware comes out, and an investigator finds it. They decrypt it really fast. And they're like, hey, cool, look at us. We found this new variant, and we were able to throw decryption on, or we were able to decrypt it on our own, and we're awesome. Well, yeah, thanks. You just tested my, my piece of ransomware, and I know that these are the tools you use. I know this is how you decrypted it. So when I actually build the correct platform of it, I know how to avoid that. Thanks for playing. So detection. And this is, in general, this isn't for a specific kind of ransomware or and, and or it may not work all the time. But, you know, look for some indicators of comp or, uh, yeah, indicators of compromise for various things. So, a lot of times you can find a hash IP 
you can find you know the domain for the command and control. So you can actually look for that and monitor for that. And if you see any connections to these things, or you you, know, you, you see this hash on your network, you know you have ransomware. You know, watch for any kind of modifications to uh, the file or registry, because obviously for not only ransomware but any kind of malware, you know it's going to do something. It's going to replace some things. So look for it. Using honey pots and honey files is great. Um, and again, bogus ransomware. So if you happen to find, talking about the ransomware testing, if you will, from the last slide, if you happen to find ransomware and you know you go through the process, you have somebody come in and they say, okay, cool, don't worry about it. We took care of it. We were able to decrypt it. This ransomware sucked. Watch for that because more than likely if that happened, that was just a that was just a test for your environment and prepare for the actual targeted attack of the ransomware specifically to your organization and that's already happened um, that last bullet point I can't really talk about uh, the details of it but uh, there was a company that had a piece of ransomware that hadn't seen, hadn't been seen before they called in their uh, incident response they said hey don't worry about it we took care of it and then a few months later <clears throat> targeted so some best practices. This one, if security awareness training was done properly, it doesn't matter whether it's ransomware, it's malware, it's social engineering, it's blah, 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 blah. This is the best thing you can do for any organization because people are the weakest link. So like every talk I ever give and it has anything about best practices, that's always number one. Uh, specifically more for malware or for uh, ransomware, you know, don't enable macros and documents for, you know, email attachments. That's just, just don't do it anyway, but specifically for ransomware, you know, obviously patch, you know, stay current with, uh, with new threats. The more you know, the better you can protect your organization. So always, you know, kind of keep an eye every day. What's going on? What's new with ransomware? What's new with malware? What are they doing? How's it being executed? How's it being dropped? Um, show your file extensions. If you're a Windows shop, you know, don't hide them. Show them. That way, if you have a few files that may have been encrypted, but they're files you don't really pay attention to, you know, it doesn't hurt to always, you know, go through, check to see what's there, check to see what's not there, and back up your data. Because if you get hit and you don't have a copy and you don't want to pay, then you don't get the data. I mean, it's just that easy. Oh, that was the last one. Okay, that was. So, questions? Eric? Yeah. Go ahead, you had one. Sure. So the question was, uh, what's the best way to, to, in essence, to stay current on, you know, uh, how ransomware is infecting the environment and, um, you know, basically what they're doing. Uh, the first thing I would recommend is follow Mick Douglas, who's right behind you on Twitter. I'm just kidding. Shameless, shameless Mick Douglas plug. Um, no, so there, there's a lot of, I mean, honestly, Twitter, I hate Twitter, but I love Twitter. So what's that? Yeah. Yes. So, like Mick just said, SANS Internet Storm Center is really good. Um, there's a few uh, threat intel services out there that you can get a lot of good information from as well. Um, let's see, so SANS Internet Storm Center is a good one. Um, Alien Vaults OTX. Uh, you can actually uh, get um, file hashes, IPs, a lot of things like that. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of good open source stuff out there. And honestly, if you just like Google what's going on with ransomware or things like that, you'll find a ton of great resources. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. First of all, what was the the extent of the FBI rate on on the the Game Over Zeus network number two? I do have a honeypot operating in my, in my environment, and I, I mean, I, it does detect ransomware stuff, 
But I mean, it pretty much gives you like a warning as the whole thing comes down. It's pretty much like locking up the you know, stable up for the truck at all. Or it's stolen. Mm -hmm. So, what, if you have a, a best practice to augment that, go for it. Okay, so the first one, uh, the FBI raid on Game Over Zeus. Um, yeah, so that was for ransomware authors and, and distributors more so. Uh, that was a big hit, you know, to their pockets. Um, so that, for now, that did hurt them. But just like anything else, right, um, they're going to find, uh, you know, those guys. And, you know, once everyone gets locked up, they're gone. And... Somebody else is going to come in and take their place. So temporarily, yeah, it was it was a hit, um, and you know you you're, you saw a lull, if you will, if you watch trends. But just like anything else, somebody's going to come in and take the spot. Um, the second one, so honeypots. I understand what you're saying about you know like locking the stable once the horses are, yeah, the horses are stolen. However, using your honeypot, and let's say your honeypot gets hit, right? A if if you're monitoring, you know, that on a sim or where do you have, whatever you have, you're going to see that and you're going to be able to detect that before something else gets hit. And that's that's the most important piece. So, um, you know, obviously you want to make your honeypot attractive, but not too attractive. So an attacker is going to you know, know what it is. But um, if you're monitoring that, then your honeypot gets hit and then bam, you know, uh oh, something's going on. I need to take, you know, whatever my answer response steps are. Um, just like honey files. So honey files, you know, it's a file. Hey, look at me. This is, you know, this is juicy. If something touches it, then you know instantly, like, okay, I need to, you know, I need to investigate this like pronto. Answer your question? There was, I'll, I'll get to you in just one second. Uh, do you see any hybrids for things like, there breaks in the steel data like the DMC has? Yes. So the the question is, uh, we see any hybrid attacks? So, or somebody might come in and steal data, and then also, um, you know, drop ransomware. Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. So yes, um, and that's going to start happening more and more. Honestly, when you start seeing more state sponsored attacks with ransomware. So, you know, if I'm an attacker, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get the data. You know, that's what I want. That's my end goal. Whether I'm going to use it to sell, whether I'm going to sell it, I'm going to dump it or whatever else. That's my end goal. And obviously, if I'm going to take it, somebody at some point is going to know that I took it and they're going to report it or do whatever. Um, however, if I drop ransomware when I'm done, then I get two things out of it, right? I get paid again and it's less likely to be reported because we have ransomware. And a lot of companies don't want to say they got hit with ransomware. It's kind of like, you know, if you have a, um, you know, if you have a kidnapping or something like that, a lot of times in, in foreign countries, they don't like the ransom's paid and you never hear about it because it just entices that business of kidnapping, if you will. Same thing with ransomware. Answer your question. Yeah. Sir. Sophos is advertising a marketing and there's a solution for defending against ransomware. Are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. um, I am not familiar with it, so my thoughts on its effectiveness are none, just because I, I'm not familiar with it. Um, yeah, I I wish I could like throw more out there for it, just to make your question or to answer your question a little bit better. But unfortunately, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm guessing that your recommendation is not pay. Um, I, mean, I, get, I get the fact people couldn't go by and they have, but the follow-up question though is, is um, those that are hit, what's the danger, and maybe you know some, uh, some actual ransomware does this, uh, the ransomware after after the fact installing a, like a rootkit or something, so later they can super, attack with a different direction. Right, super persistence. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying don't pay it, um, because honestly, if you don't pay it, you won't have your, you won't have your files. I mean, so unfortunately, if you're not following best security practices and you don't do all these other things and you get hit with it, your only choice, honestly, is to pay it. Um, as far as, like, dropping a rootkit or dropping other things afterwards for some persistence, um, haven't really seen a lot of that yet. Um, I mean, I know they're good about giving your files back, you know, right. your files because that's a business model. Right. They don't want to have repeat customers, so. Well, you're right yeah. from, a, from the business side of it, though. 
right? So when you start doing like targeted attacks, state sponsored stuff, you know, they're they're doing it, you know, to as part of other attack methods. So yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense that they'd want to, uh, you know, have some kind of persistence afterwards. Yes, sir. To follow up on that, so you know, uh, recognizing that you might not be able to protect against everything, you might be in a situation where you have to say, uh, go back to your earlier comment about Bitcoin. Does it make sense to have Bitcoin as part of a, an incident response or crisis management plan? Um, me personally, I'd rather put that money toward you know doing the doing the right thing the first time. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's hard, right? So. If you're an instant response person, um, you're you're going to say no, don't do that. Put the money where it should go. Um, from a business standpoint, though, sometimes you can't get those funds in that area, right? So it's a catch twenty two. My personal recommendation and my professional recommendation is: don't spend the money on buying Bitcoin. Spend the money on securing your environment the way it should be. Any other questions? Once, twice. All right. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your con.